Uh, good morning. I'm Jerry Smetana. I'm a general internist at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Uh, we're here today at the ACP Internal Medicine 2019 meeting, and I'll be discussing with you some findings from a presentation that we did on type 2 diabetes today. Uh, today we did a session on Beyond the Guidelines for the Annals of Internal Medicine and to collaboration between the Annals and my institution, which is Beth Israel Deaconess, where we have two experts come and debate an important topic where guidelines are controversial or might differ from each other. Today we selected a very important topic for primary care, which was A1C targets for our patients with type 2 diabetes. This morning we presented a case of a patient from our institution who talked about her own concerns about diabetes management, her fears about using a needle for treatment of her diabetes, and her perception of what the A1C target should be. Uh, we presented the salient recommendations from the American College of Physicians who made a recommendation or a guideline on this topic about a year ago. And that was really the source of the controversy for which we decided to do this session. Um, they recommended that for most adults with type 2 diabetes, the A1C target should actually be 7 to 8 percent, which differs from the recommendations from many of the diabetes association, which is less than 7 for most patients and even less than 6.5 if it can be achieved safely for others. So there was a difference between these two principal guidelines. The guidelines that were used to develop the American College of Physicians statement were focused primarily on the principal results from four large randomized controlled trials of more intensive versus less intensive glycemic control, where the target ranged in the intensive group anywhere from 6 to 6.5 to seven, such as, for example, the Accord, Advance, UK PDS, and VA trials. And we looked at the primary results from them uh, this morning. Uh, what was interesting in this, and I think surprised many of the attendees, is that in the initial results from each of these trials that went out for five to seven years, there was no reduction in macrovascular events. In fact, in a core, there was actually an increased rate for mortality in patients in the intensive arm. However, when we followed these data out further with extended follow-up studies, and one of our discussants presented that, there was now a reduction in microvascular events in several of the trials, but still no convincing or consistent reduction in macrovascular events, even in prolonged follow-up. Um, our two discussants this morning were Dr. David Nathan, who's a diabetologist and a national leader in this field from Mass General Hospital in Boston, and Dr. David Dugdale from University of Washington, who's a generalist but also has an interest in diabetes in his practice. And we asked them to talk about the different uh, points in these guidelines in a discussion format. And they really agreed about many of the points in the guidelines. There was agreement about individualizing goals based on patients' preferences. Uh, there was agreement at the uh, end of life, in the last 10 years of life, that there was little to be gained by aggressive A1C targets and more risk for hypoglycemia. They did differ on the core recommendation from ACP. Dr. Dugdale still uh, endorsed the ACP recommendation for a target of 7 to 8 percent for most patients. And Dr. Nathan presented some fairly convincing data that less than 7 should be the case for most of our patients. I think an interesting observation from Dr. Dugdale was the difference between absolute risk reduction and relative risk reduction. So for example, trials would report a 30 percent risk reduction which was actually a relative risk reduction when the absolute risk reduction to a patient was actually quite small for micro or macrovascular events. Uh, we had a lively discussion and many great questions from the audience that I think could have extended even another half an hour if we had time because it was such an important question. Um, we're going to publish the results of this uh, presentation as a manuscript in the Annals of Internal Medicine later this year. So I would ask you to keep an eye out for that. It will probably be in the fall of 2019. We'll, we'll explore some of these issues I just mentioned um, in more detail. 
So thank you for your interest and uh, good luck in caring for your patients with type 2 diabetes.